And according to the CDC, roughly 56% of the U.S. adult population has now received at least one dose of the vaccine. So is a return to normalcy on the horizon? Dr. Alok Patel from Stanford Children's Health is here with more. Dr. Patel, thanks so much for being here. Uh, the weekly case average nationwide fell below 50,000 for the first time since October. So what do you make of that? Is the end of this pandemic in sight? Well, Diane, the end of it is a relative term. And I think if we're thinking locally, as in the United States, this is great news. And it is time to really th think about reopening and rewarding everyone for what we've done for the past year and a half. But we still have a lot of work to do, not only when it comes to vaccinations, but making sure that we can mitigate whatever may happen as we reopen. And the one thing that everyone needs to really understand is that if the pandemic is controlled in the United States, that doesn't necessarily mean it is globally, because we're seeing outbreaks in Brazil, Turkey, and in India, and honestly, infections are just a flight away, so we have to stay on top of it. Now, Pfizer's vaccine is on track for emergency use authorization for children ages 12 to 15, really any day now. So what kind of an impact do you think that would have on this, you know, attempt to return to normalcy? Well, a lot of people are excited about this. And then on the other hand, there's another group of people who rightfully are saying, well, 12 to 15 years old, they're a low risk. What's the big deal? But what people need to really understand is that children make up a large proportion of the population in the United States, but also can make a potential large vector for infections. So we're not only looking at protecting those children aged 12 to 15 and getting them ready to go back to school, back into their normal lives. We're also essentially protecting everyone around those kids. That's other children, grandparents, parents, or anyone else who may not be able to get their vaccine. So this is an important step forward in getting us to as close to herd immunity as possible. And what's the timeline for young younger kids to get vaccinated. Well, when we go before below the age of 12, you know, we have trials coming out from Moderna and Pfizer, and we're looking to see that we might see some preliminary data by the end of this year, but I wouldn't bank on anything being authorized until a little bit later in 2021, if not early 22. So right now we really have to focus on those younger adolescents right in that 12 to 15 age range. Now that said, the American Academy of Pediatrics is reporting that children now account for 22% of new U.S. COVID cases. Why is that? Well, and that's exactly what I was kind of hinting at earlier, is that even though children themselves represent a lower risk group in terms of hospitalizations or severe illness, even though they can get sick, children are right now, they're unprotected, they're unvaccinated. So as we reopen and cases are still out there, children can absolutely make up a large proportion of who's actually getting infected, but also who can continue to spread the virus. And we saw a case, a case report of this happening in Michigan, and that's exactly what we're trying to prevent right now. Now, the U.S. travel ban from India takes effect today as the official COVID case count there tops 20 million. So what do Indian and world leaders need to do right now to help get that surge there under control? Well, it's, it's a completely heartbreaking situation, Diane, as we look to see what's happening in India, total collapse of the healthcare situation. I think the biggest thing people need to do globally is not just look at the headlines or the news stories and say, oh my gosh, that's sad, and then move on. You know, India represents a, a case of what can absolutely happen if there is under protection from vaccines, if there's a reopening too soon, and if you know, countries aren't prepared for it. So as far as looking at India and saying, what can we do on a global scale to help by donating PPE, um, oxygen tanks, what the average consumer, the average citizen can do, we also need to use India as an example of what we need to be prepared for, because that can happen anywhere, especially when we're not vaccinating enough, when there's still variants out there and, we're, and when we're reopening too soon. All right, Dr. Alok Patel of Stanford Children's Health. It's always great to have you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.